What's up, Jones Bones? It is your girl, United Lee Random. And today, I thought I'd just share with you guys my random ideology that I pretty much had today. And that ideology came, it came across while having a conversation with Stu. For those who do not know, Stu is biracial. He biracial, ba 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 ba. He a biracial boy. And not biracial in the fact of, you know, all blacks have a little bit of white in them, you know. Slavery! But he's biracial because his mom is white and his dad is black. Now, we were having a conversation about um, issues that the black community has been bringing up on TikTok. And to me saying that this is an issue that the black community is bringing up, Stu gave his two cents. And his two cents was, I don't understand why it's a big deal. And it gave me this idea, right? And the idea is, if you are not for the cause, you have to keep your mouth shut, <laughs> okay? And he was like, wow, that's really twisted. That's really messed up. Oh, uh, why can't, and da, 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 da. And I had a lot of examples for that. So I'm gonna give you guys the examples and just bring this conversation to you guys because I think that Okay, because my eyes was doing a little... My eyes was doing a little something. I need to get those checked. Anyway, we'll have that little conversation here. And, like, you guys will tell me if I'm a little bit too biased. Because I might be too biased, okay? I might have some views. That's too dark. Some views that might need to be checked. And, therefore, you guys can check it a little bit. But until then, I'll just share my views with you guys, okay? So, it's going to be a little bit darker because I'm, I want to put the camera down. So, see you right after the intro. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Okay, so I put the camera down and I'm just gonna stand right here because it's just too much to walk all the way around this area and talk to you guys. So the reason that that conversation came up, I already told you, we were watching TikToks and there was a situation in which a white person read a song and the people in the comments were like, oh my goodness, this is the representation that we need for women loving women. But the original artist of the song was a black female and then everyone was saying well we already had that representation and also just because they the other person rap faster doesn't make it like a better rendition of the song and stuff like that so that kind of started a war on tiktok not really like a war but like a war on tiktok they're going back and forth um they're telling the girl well you know first of all you didn't even credit the original artist which is something that people have not been doing i don't know why you you remade the entire song and you remade it in that image like it's not oh i redid the song and if you listen to my song and you listen to the original song you don't hear the similarities it's like the same song and she just added a couple of words right so it's like turning in someone else someone okay you copied someone's homework and you wrote your name on it boom that's it <laughs> that's what they did and so um people had a problem with that because there has been a long-standing history of people not crediting black creators in the making of things, right? So, it was just, we were just having that conversation and Stu was like, play that for me. And I played it for him and he was like, oh, that's not bad. Um, and you know, that shouldn't have caused a war or anything like that. And I was like, well, um, I think that in this case, if you are not for the cause, you're more so against it. And as me and Stu, like, you know, light skin privilege on me too. Um, light skin privilege on me. It, it exists, you know, I'm a little, I'm caramel. And so I can't speak for black people. And Stu definitely cannot speak for black people being someone who is 
mixed race and being someone because you know when you raised you're raised more so in the culture of your mother being someone who's mixed race with a white mother a lot of these issues that me and Stu have been having conversations about like um issues that regard race he's never had conversations about this before and it's just like his identity he's never had conversations about this before and so like because of that, he has not grown up seeing his race as he was raised. And I think that in the black community, that's something we are, we're just raised doing. We're raised seeing our race in pretty much everything that we do. Um, we're raised and taught how to act in public because our image is not our own image. Our image is every other black person's image, okay? Especially the older blacks. My mom is an older black woman and she literally grew up with a mom that was a uh, well not a mom but a grandmother that went and cleaned um the white people's mansions so my dad father was literally my dad grew up as a little kid as a sharecropper and you know sharecropping was right after you know slavery so um First of all, those ties are still there and it still devastates the black community in ways of how we are raised and how we are taught as we are raised. And that's the thing when I tell Stu, hey, you know, you are black, identifiably black, but culturally you did not grow up in that culture. And we've had a lot of conversations about it. And at first he didn't see it, but now he sees it more. And I'm just like, yeah, this is this is a thing. This is a thing with growing up black and not to say every single black person grows up in this way but especially in the south it's a more prevalent thing and um if you did not grow up in that way or in that manner it does make it so that you probably don't see race as much as other black people and Stu definitely did not see race as much and Stu also didn't have a lot of um empathy for other people <laughs> like before I came into it I was like you know you're gonna have to stop being an a-hole to people it has effects like people always say sticks and stones don't ever break your bones um but words you know I don't know the, the saying y'all know the saying words do hurt um I'm a firm believer and you watch what you say <laughs> because words can hurt and I know because I was hurt by words you know um but at the end of the day, I told him that, yes, you can sit at the table, but when the conversation comes up about what is appropriate um, for black people or how they should feel about certain things, he should keep his mouth shut because he obviously doesn't know or can't understand that experience. And the problem with him opening up his mouth is he will speak from a place of privilege, of not having to understand that story, of not having to really get it. You have a idea of it because you are black, but even still, to a certain extent, you are not black, okay? And that's the thing. And originally to hearing that, he got very defensive. He's like, how am I not black and da, da 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 And I told him that a completely white girl that grew up in a completely black um, town with a bunch of black, you know, black mama and everything, she is um, culturally more black than him. And he was like, oh, so should she be able to speak? And I was like, no, because even if she's more black than you, she is not black. <laughs> and, um, Again, defensive, defensive, and I recognize it because, you know, I'm saying that something that you grew up believing is not necessarily true. And I said the reason that that white girl who uh, grew up with the black family and everything her entire life still can sit at that table, but she can't speak is because she cannot speak over black voices, um, people who are born black, live black their entire life, and also have had the black experience, have had direct touchy touches with being black, okay? Which while Stu has been, um, he is considered black in society, he 
didn't necessarily grow up directly in that touchy touch okay and it'd be the same thing of a possibly a uh, black child being raised by a completely white um, family um, and just having um, interactions with the black community through school or through their peers and stuff like that it would still be the same thing there are certain levels of things that they probably won't understand and it shows because when these conversations are had about you know blackness and what is okay and they say something that is detrimental to the black voice then everyone gets angry right my camera's about to go dead so i'm gonna pause and come back up. and that Oh, coming back. But that's a big conversation that um, people who are ethically and culturally and everything black are trying to explain to um, mixed people on the Internet is when you speak, you don't speak for black voices, but the odds are um, the white people who didn't want to hear the black voices are going to be more likely to listen to a mixed person. Why? because black people are generally seen as more aggressive when we are speaking about certain things um, black women are seen as more masculine these are you know these are things that are true these are things that you can study these are things that we can see um, black people in um, black little kids you know we are seen as more grown exhibiting the same behaviors as our counterpart okay and so because of that I think it creates a situation where it could be some irritation um, from the black community towards mixed kids. I don't feel the irritation from the, like, personally, I don't feel irritation from the black community towards mixed kids. But as me being someone who was, you know, lighter, I grew up being bullied and stuff like that. So I definitely felt the irritation um, growing up. Now, in this case specifically, again, I'm just saying, hey, you can sit at the table, but that doesn't give you, you know, you can't speak up for, you know, the black community as a whole. Just like I can't speak up for the black community as a whole. But um, one of the things I am pointing out is if you're not for the cause, you're against it. So if a big black community is saying, hey, this is problemsome, and Stu comes up and he's like, Nah, it's not problemsome. And then he shares his opinion with other people who are, you know, um, not black. Then they kind of get an image that, oh, well, he said that it's okay. And it kind of diminishes the other voices in that culture, right? And that's the problem. So I was like, hey, sit at the table. Don't speak because you don't understand the thing. And like even me, there are certain things that I don't necessarily understand. Like the whole like um, black fishing. There's a uh, thing where black people are like white people keep trying to be um, black and everything. And to a certain extent, I understand it. But to another extent, it's more so like you see something beautiful and you want to be like that. But then it, it also makes sense that, hey, if I was bullied about this specifically by um, my white peers about how big my lips are and now you're going and getting your lips injected to be bigger, it kind of feels really wrong. So, on all in all, I think that the best antidote that I can use for this situation is a real life experience that happened to me in which I was in a group in South Korea. I was a part of a group called, I don't know, Foreigners in Korea. And a Korean person came into the group and he was like, why do black people not like being called the N word? Like what's the, what's the big deal? And someone from South Africa who is, you know, black came and they were like, oh, it's no big deal. I don't have any problems with anyone calling me the N word. This is someone who was born and raised in South Africa. And as a black American is like, oh, do not say that word. Do not say that word. You will get knocked out. Don't say that word. So we are both black. You get me? We are both black, but there's a cultural difference. And by her saying, oh, yeah, there's no big deal for you to say that word. You are taking away from the voices that are actually affected by this situation. 
and you don't understand. You're just saying it from your point of view, but someone can use your point of view as their reasoning to continue a certain behavior, right? And so I was explaining all of this to Stuart, and he, in the end of the conversation, he told me that if we are back in time, um, he thinks that he would have been with Martin Luther King and I would have been with Malcolm X. And to that, I was like, well, I'm not going to be violent about it. Like, I have no need to be violent about it, but I do hold certain beliefs. And the beliefs is, you know, I, I believe that instead of doing away with color and like saying, oh, yeah, I don't see color. Um, which is like a colorblind form of racism. Oh, I don't see color when a lot of things in situations and um, a lot of what my family went through had a lot to do with color. It takes away from that experience, okay? Um, I'd much rather someone say, hey, I see color, okay? But it doesn't mean that I'm going to treat you bad because I know notice that you're black. Um, I don't personally... In my mind, I don't personally want it to be, oh, I don't care what you are, purple, black, or, you know, and actually, I don't see color. I don't want that. I don't, I, but here's the thing, you know, light skin, I don't know how this adds into it, but I don't want, I just want black people in America to just be like black people in America. We have different cultures. We have different things. Why are we trying to be, um, homogenous why are we trying to bring it all all together i'm not black i'm american like a lot of us have different cultural standpoints a lot of us have different childhood a a v e you know a different vernacular and a lot of us in the black community are like raised with that ingrained in us in a way that other people have to be taught the habitual e you know what i'm saying so it's just very interesting, the idea of blackness. I like to have the conversation, but like in no parts am I like over here saying, oh, da, 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 da. I am the black voice, but I would like to have that conversation because this is how I view things. Um, at the end of the day, I just much rather uh, people be respectful. I just much rather people be like, okay, like, like, instead of trying to hide away from the tough conversations, we just have the tough conversations. Just like how people just didn't want to have the conversations about the AIDS pe epidemic when it was first happening. Or how people didn't want to have the conversation about how priests are doing things. Or how in the black community people don't want to have conversations about how family members are doing things that family members shouldn't be doing. I think that just creates a bowl of pain for that community and if we don't want to we don't want to talk about the effects of slavery which i believe personally i believe those effects are still running rampant and it's not just bad credit scores i think it's running rampant in the generational trauma that we are trying to heal um if we don't have those conversations then it's just being ignored and if it's being ignored how is it being healed it's just being put to the wayside you know what i'm saying Hello. So someone came to clean out that room and I think I'm just going to take that as a it's time to end that conversation. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts about this. I don't think I really gave that to you like on a silver platter. I was just all over the place. But even then, still, I think that is definitely a conversation that should be held because even like I said, I am care male in the black community i think that still i grew up with a mother that really was like you know it doesn't matter the color but it was like it doesn't matter the color of blackness you're still black and so she raised me with these cultural little nuances that i just don't think Stuart was ever raised with and it's because he wasn't raised in that household he wasn't raised in that culture he's never really going to truly understand like he'll hear some things that I say and be like oh yeah I've heard of that from now in time and him just hearing of it it's funny for me because it was an entire life for me it was like you can't just hear about it it's your life it's your life bing bong um 
And so also on top of that, my experience of blackness was also being um, someone who was also considered neurodivergent. Uh, not normal in the brain. So I have a certain view of blackity black black um, that my people who have neurodivergent brains might have. Um, so I always want to go ahead and share that point of view with you guys. And I think it's an interesting conversation. So bye.